this video, we're going to be talking about two closely related pieces of equipment, the calorimeter and the thermometer. Now let's start off by talking about the thermometer. For those of you who don't know, thermometers are used to measure heat in units of temperature, and there are three units in common use today, degrees of Celsius, degrees of Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. For almost all chemistry purposes, you'll likely want to measure in either Kelvin or Celsius. Thermometers can come in many shapes and sizes and with many different methods of measurement, but the most common types of thermometers in use are the electronic thermometer and the glass and liquid thermometer, which cost about $30 and $5 respectively. Now these types of thermometers work through contact, so simply place the end of the thermometer on or in the object you want to measure and then read the value. Most electronic thermometers will display their reading on an LED display, making them very easy to read. Just be sure that the thermometer is set to the correct units you want to measure. Glass and fluid thermometers work a little differently, with small markings at set intervals to show the temperature. Now you can read the temperature of a glass and fluid thermometer kind of like you read a graduated cylinder. You just need to wait for the colored fluid inside to reach a consistent, stable level, and then read the black mark closest to the top surface of the fluid. Now if the fluid is between two black marks, you can give a decimal approximation. Temperature, of course, can be used for many applications in chemistry, including finding the enthalpy of a reaction, activation energy of a reaction, heat capacity of a substance, and much more. However, in order to get an accurate reading on the temperature change of a system, we'll need to use a calorimeter. Calorimeters are designed to thermally isolate a system, normally a reaction, from its surroundings, and are used in calorimetry experiments to get an accurate reading on the temperature change of a system being studied. Now, the first calorimeter was used in 1782 by Antoine Lavoisier, who allowed a chemical reaction to melt ice and then use the mass of that melted water to estimate the heat of that reaction. This form of calorimeter was known as an ice calorimeter. Now, in modern times, calorimeters are much more precise and diverse, with many different types in common use, each designed to keep certain variables constant and each with its own degree of accuracy. A common specialized calorimeter you're likely to hear about is the bomb calorimeter. A bomb calorimeter is designed to keep the volume of a system constant and is generally used to measure the heat of a combustion reaction. A calorimeter can cost anywhere from $15 to a few thousand dollars, depending on the type, but you can make your own general calorimeter using household items for less than a dollar. A reasonably accurate calorimeter can be made by nesting two styrene reaction vessels, also known as styrofoam cups, together and closing off the top with some sort of cover, like what you see here. The inside cup would generally be filled with water, and the system being studied would be placed in that water with a simple thermometer to measure the temperature. To use this type of calorimeter, you take the temperature of the solution before any reaction takes place, and then add all necessary reactants, put the cover on top, and take the temperature once the reaction is finished. To find the change in temperature, you simply subtract the final temperature from the initial temperature. Now, with your knowledge of thermometers and calorimeters, you can explore a whole new world of thermochemistry. Just remember, always take proper safety measures when dealing with very hot or very cold substances.